I'm still getting music. Welcome to OLC 40 term two. Oh, it says to be here, but it's actually term one A. And we are on class four. And we're going to be looking at assignments number three, number four, and number five today. So hang on. I'm going to leave that there for a second. I don't know if you guys can hear the music. I apologize. We're just kind of, they've upgraded Zoom and that always kind of changes things a little bit. All right. I am going to go to my contact meeting page. I am expecting someone to join us today. So I'm kind of keeping an eye out for that person. If you show up and I don't recognize you right away, just hang on a sec. It's just because, uh, like I said, they've changed the controls a little bit. Okay, so this is the different ways to contact us. The main thing is if I'm in the studio and you want to talk to me while I'm broadcasting, 1-800-465-7144 um, or 737-4017. That's if you want to talk about what we're talking about today. If you have a question about a different assignment, about something different, call me at the office, 1-800-667-3703. And uh, my extension is 2211. Right now we're in term 1A and my office hours are Monday to Thursday, 8.30 to 11.30. And then I take a lunch break and then I'm back from 1.30 to 4.30, but I'm in the studio. So obviously if you try and call the office, you won't reach me there because I'm over here right now. On Friday, my office hours are 8.30 to 12 o'clock and then a lunch break. And then I'm back at 1 to 3.30. Office hours change from term to term. So this term ends on October 1st. After that point, you'll need to check with the office and see what my new office hours are. Uh, if you have any assignments to send in, please send them to studentwork at nnec.on.ca. And that way the secretary can log that you submitted the work. Don't just send it directly to my email, right? Because that doesn't include it in the entire database. And if something happened to me and another teacher took over the course, there would be no record um, in the database of your assignment, right? So this way, it kind of just gives you security in case anything changed. Um, please include your full name, your course name, the assignment number, and the name on every assignment. Also, please label if it's the rough or the good draft of a writing assignment. Uh, sometimes they have different marks. I am looking for different things. I'm usually looking for changes from the rough to the good draft. And if I don't know which one is which, especially if you're typewriting everything, then it's hard for me to give the marks appropriately, okay? There are a few assignments in this course where you need to take a picture of your writing or your checklist or whatever you're doing. Today is one of those days. When you take that picture, send it to me, not directly as an email if you're taking it on your phone, but send it as an attachment to an email, okay? If you send it directly, it comes out really strangely big and doesn't show up properly on a computer. It's probably because it's going from a phone to a computer, but it just ends up being um, difficult to see and print off. Whereas if you send it an as an attachment, it's really easy to handle. Um, if you are looking to communicate with me and you don't like email or don't have an email, uh, you could use Facebook, capital G, capital P-E-R-C-Y, space, capital W-A-H-S-A. If you do like email, I'm at jillian.percy at N-N, that should be two N's there, ecschools.org. You can also do uh, Jillian, sorry, there you go, Percy at N-N-E-C dot O-N dot C-A. Now, it seems funny that I have two emails, but the reason is because we are a Google Classroom, so we have a Google email, and which is the school's one over here, and I have kind of my regular uh, office one. Occasionally, people who like to share documents with Google, they use this NNEC schools org to communicate with me, and that's fine if that's what you're doing, okay? Um, let me see. Oh, if you didn't want to email stuff, you could also fax it to us. 1-800-463-7852. Uh, you could even mail it to us, but I got to be honest, it takes a few weeks. And if you did that, I would want to be really sure that you had like photocopied everything before you sent it to me because I would hate for you to lose something in the mail. Okay. So I'm going to go forward because I don't see the person who said she was going to join us. Maybe she'll come in a little bit later. Um, so learning goals for today. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to read and understand a graphic text that lists communication skills and rank them in terms of the importance to you personally. 
read a graphic text about paired personality traits and choose which one represents your most common personality traits. Reflect and summarize your personality traits in complete sentences. Set a reading and a writing goal for this course. Identify a grandfather teaching that you find important and discuss how it will help you be successful in this course. And then if we have a little bit of time at the end, we're going to understand how to create a compound sentence correctly. We try and do a little bit of grammar every day. Um, sometimes it may be like super easy for you. Other times you may not have heard of those things before. Um, there's been a real, depending on how old you are, some schools didn't really teach a whole lot of grammar the last 15, 20 years. So if you're at one of those schools, you may not have heard some of the phrases I'm using. So I'm trying to teach a little bit each day so that it's not overwhelming. Okay. So graphic text, it's kind of a funny phrase. Um, both assignment number three and assignment number four today are examples of a graphic text. Graphic text will not have just writing. There's usually some sort of visual element included that is often an important part of understanding the texts. So graphic texts could be things like tables or charts, graphs, schedules, posters, diagrams, business logos or brands, like if I take a look at this, right? If I just read the word Nike, it doesn't mean anything, but this graphic text of this swoosh and these capital letters that are italicized, I know that means the Nike brand of shoes and athletic clothing, right? So it kind of, the graphic part of it gives it extra meaning. So assignment number three today is a table and we're gonna look at a list of communication skills and then check off how important each skill is to you in your life at work, at home, and at school. Okay, so the reason we're doing this assignment is so that you'll have some ideas on how to pick some literacy goals when we get to assignment number five. And if you already know how to do a skill, there's no point choosing it as a literacy skill. Uh, but if you think it's important and you wanna improve, then it's a good goal to choose. Now, this assignment is so simple. Sometimes people don't even realize they really do have to do it and hand it in to me, but you do. It's worth 10 marks. I, I'm just looking at that you've finished it. That's really all I'm looking for. All I want you to do is read each item and then circle or highlight what level of importance you feel that skill is. Not whether you think you're good at it, but how important a skill you think it is. Then take a photo or scan that into your computer and send that along to the student studentwork at nnec.on.ca. Do not see that little extra period. Don't put that there. It'll it'll bounce back to you. Now, um, this first section is oral communication skills. It says very important to not important. So a lot of people would say one would be very important and five is not important. It's not super crucial as long as you understand it and you can use it in order to do assignment number five. So following instructions, how important do I think that is? Well, I think it's pretty important in a workplace, right? Maybe just not in my regular life because people aren't that bossy, but in the workplace, it's pretty important. Listening skills. Most jobs, listening skills are pretty important. Conversational skills. Now that depends on the job, right? If you're doing night security and you're not really talking to people, conversational skills may not be super important. If you're a salesman, they may be very important. So that may depend a little bit on what kind of job you do, right? Uh, giving feedback. Giving feedback is when you're kind of telling somebody, this is what you did well, this is what you did poorly. And again, that depends on what kind of job you do. Somebody who's like a hockey coach, that's a huge part of their job. If you are um, working as a waitress, not so much, right? So you would just decide for yourself, is it very important, pretty important, and I'm not really sure one way or the other, uh, not really important or not important at all, okay? And you do with that for each one of these. Uh, communicating with the public, right? So that could be a job like teaching or social work or anything where you're dealing with a lot of different people. Conflict resolution skills, basically helping people um, manage um, like uh, arguments and conflicts. Negotiation skills, that would be important if you're doing sales, um, it comes up with police work, anything where you're trying to get two different sides to give a little. Interview skills, training skills. Okay, over here we've got written communication skills. And again, each time you're trying to decide, 
Is it very important or is it not important? And there's no right or wrong answer. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Like I said, just kind of flipping back real quickly, the reason you're doing this is because you're using this checklist to help you pick out some literacy goals when we get to assignment number five, which we're gonna do at the end of class today, okay? So I've got some little pre-made things that I would just choose. Spelling school skills, eh, kind of important. You can use spell check for a lot of things. Grammar or sentence writing skills. Again, you'd have to decide. A lot of people are answering like according to, not this course, but to their life in general. So if you're working on construction, you may not feel like sentence writing skills are that important. If you're working in an office and you're doing emails and writing letters every day, it may be super important. So these skills are really, there's no right answer. What I'm saying is it really depends on you and what's going on in your life. Okay, so uh, using punctuation correctly, writing email messages, using words effectively, using techniques of style correctly, um, writing routine and pleasant letters and memos, writing unpleasant letters and memos, writing to persuade. In other words, you're trying to get somebody to do something or like you're working in advertising and trying to get people to buy stuff. Uh, writing short reports, like less than three pages or writing formal reports, more than three pages. We do not do any formal reports in this course. Okay, that's something you would do for like a university level course. That's not what this is. Um, diversity, multicultural communication skills, cultural awareness, second language skills, um, nonverbal communication. In other words, like communicating without words through gestures, um, facial expressions, those kind of things. Verbal communication, which is communicating with words and communicating ideas clearly to different audiences. And then on the next page is a tiny little section and some people don't see that, but it's a good idea to conclude. Okay, so these two, for some reason they're on both sides, I don't know why. All right, electronic communications, use of email, use of Facebook, use of cell phone use, internet research, research skills. We do do a little bit of that in this course. And then media creation skills. Things like making posters, uh, working with Adobe Photoshop, um, different software programs, making brochures, we do a little bit of that. Like you have to use some software. Well, you don't have to, but it's helpful to use some software for things like making resumes and posters and things like that. There's a lot of really good programs out there. So we do talk about that. Okay, once you've finished that checklist, and it's pretty quick, it's like a five minute job really, take a look at it. Is there anything that you marked as important but you would like to get better at because that might become one of your literacy goals. In assignment number five, we need to pick a literacy goal and this checklist is one way to do it. I have my um, tech person pointing out to me. Something's not quite right. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm gonna do a quick little, you can hear me okay? I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me good? All right, yeah. and I can hear you, sorry. Okay. There we go, okay, awesome. All right, um, if I look through my checklist, I checked that I thought email is pretty important, and, but if I felt like I'm not very good at writing emails and that becomes a possible literacy goal that we can use for assignment number five, okay? So keep this checklist around because we're gonna be using it shortly. Um, if there's anything that you really noticed as, yeah, this is one area where I wanna get better at, put a little, small note or like a little star next to the skill that you want to improve on. Okay, assignment number four. This is another quick one. It's just 10 marks. It's a graphic text. Temperament just means like your character or your personality. And we've got like kind of a little checklist. This is a little more complicated than the last one. You're reading through the following list of paired attributes and thinking about which one is more often true about you. And you're going to highlight or circle the descriptions in each category that describe you most often. And then finally, for each category, you're gonna identify what kind of person you were according to the checklist, right? So extroverts versus introverts. Extroverts energy is directed primarily outward towards people and things outside of themselves. Introverts energy is primarily directed inwards towards their own thoughts, perceptions, and reactions. Therefore, extroverts tend to be more naturally active, expressive, social, and interested in many things, whereas introverts tend to be more reserved, private, cautious, 
and interested in fewer social interactions, but with a greater depth and focus. So that's kind of general. And then here we have the par paired items. Hang on. The screens are a little bit different. So mine that shows on this one, it didn't. Here we go. So if I'm looking at high energy versus quiet energy, I would kind of look at those and go, which one am I? So high energy is that kind of person, they walk in the room and you instantly notice them, right? They practically bounce it in the room like, hi, how are you? Hi, everybody. And they've got like, they radiate personality, right? Introverts are more quiet. They might kind of come in the room so quietly, you barely even notice they're there. They might say very shyly, hi, how you doing? They're not really drawing attention to yourself. So I would say, or even though I'm a teacher, in classroom, I've got high energy. In personal life, I've got quiet energy, right? And again, there's no right and wrong answers to these. Whatever you think you are is totally fine. And then you've got talk more than listen, listen more than talk. Well, in this case, at least in my job, I probably talk a bit more than I listen. It's probably not a good thing, but it's true. Think out loud, think quietly inside my heads. Generally, I think I'm thinking quietly inside my head. Um, act then think or think then act. I am definitely a think then act thing. I will spend oodles of time thinking about something. So you would do this for each one of them. And then at the end, you would take a look at it and see um, which ones did you have more of. And each time you're just looking at the two that are across from each other, like, do I like to be around people a lot or do I feel more comfortable being alone? Um, do I prefer a public role or do I prefer to work behind the scenes? Am I easily distracted or do I have good powers of concentration? Prefer to do lots of things at once or prefer to focus on one thing at a time? Um, outgoing and enthusiastic, self-contained and reserved. Occasionally, if people just try and skip this and do this like a little end chalk mark. I generally won't mark that if you do that. I just kind of send it back. So please try and do that. So here's an example of someone who answered the questions. It's pretty rare for anybody to be all one thing and none of the other. Usually we're a mixture. And occasionally people will have exactly the same amount. And that's fine. You can kind of say you're a little bit of both. Here, clearly, I've got more introvert things going on. So then down here at the bottom, there's like a little check mark thing. And I would check mark introvert. All right. The next section is sensors versus intuitives. What kind of information do you naturally notice and remember? Sensors notice the facts, details, and realities of the world around them. Um, whereas intuitives are more interested in connections and relationships between facts, as well as the meaning or possibilities of the information. Sensors tend to be practical and literal people who trust past experience and often have good common sense. Intuitives tend to be imaginative, theoretical people who trust their hunches and pride themselves on their creativity. So an example might be if you saw somebody walking past you really quickly and after they turned the corner, somebody said, oh, can you describe that person? The sensor person might go, okay, they were about six foot one and they had long brown hair and they were wearing a red t-shirt and I noticed that they had a mustache. Whereas the intuitive might be, oh, that person seemed really anxious about somebody. They were walking really quickly and their shoulders were hunched and they just had a bad energy, right? So they're they're noticing things, but they're noticing different types of things, right? Sensors are more uh, looking at concrete details. Intuitives are more looking at like emotions and feelings and that kind of thing. Okay, so here are your, your pairs here. Focus on details and specifics versus focusing on the big picture and possibilities, admiring practical solutions versus admiring creative ideas, notice and remember details and facts, notice anything new or different, are pragmatic. Pragmatic is like realistic, like you see what's going on right now. Inventive, seeing what could be in the future. Living in the here and now, thinking about the future, trusting your actual experience. Like if the last four times, you saw that guy, he stole something, then you're going to think, oh, he's probably going to do that again. Whereas trusting your gut instinct, oh, I feel like he's changed. I feel like they might be different this time, right? Liking to use established skills versus preferring to learn new skills. Um, liking step-by-step -step instructions, like think of like a Lego thing where it tells you, you know, put this block here, now put this block here. 
liking to figure things out for themselves. That'd be the person that dumps all the Lego out and creates this amazing like spacecraft. Uh, working at a steady pace ver versus working in little bursts of energy. Okay. And again, there'd be like a little bottom thing where you would make the check mark for which one you had more of. This is the kind of thing where you could be just doing this as we're reading along and just get it kind of done and out of the way. Um, you don't have to do assignments in order for the class. It's it's helpful sometimes, but it's not crucial, crucial for these things. Uh, thinkers versus feelers. This one is about how do you decide or come to conclusions or decisions? Like everybody thinks and everybody feels, but some people when they're making decisions are very logical, like Spock or Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory, whereas feelers are more emotional and they're going to make um, decisions based on what their gut tells them, like Penny. Um, so thinkers make their decisions based primarily on objective and impersonal criteria, what makes the most sense and what is logical. Feelers make their decisions based primarily on their personal values and how they feel about the choices. So Thinkers tend to be very cool, analytical, and they are most convinced by logical reasoning. Feelers tend to be very sensitive, empathetic. They're really compelled by what's going on right around them and a constant search for harmony. So somebody who's a feeler, if they're making a decision and it's going to cause people around them a lot of distress, that might make them very unhappy and they would be uncomfortable making that decision, even if they thought it was the right one. Um, and then here are your pairs. Making decisions objectively versus deciding based on their values and feelings, appearing cool and reserved versus appearing warm and friendly, convinced by rational arguments, convinced by how they feel, are honest and direct versus diplomatic and ta tactful, valuing honesty and fairness versus valuing harmony and compassion, taking a few things personally versus taking many things personally, are good at seeing flaws, are quick to compliment others, are motivated by achievement, are motivated by appreciation, like others saying, oh, thank you, I really appreciate that you did that, that kind of idea. Uh, these people will argue or debate issues just for fun. They like trying to like win an argument. Um, feelers are more likely to try and avoid arguments and conflicts because they don't like people getting stressed out and angry or anything. And then our last section is judges versus perceivers. Now, these days especially, I know judging has kind of like a negative connotation, but in this case, it's kind of more like people who are quick to make a decision about something and perceivers are kind of like they take a long time or they don't really want to make a choice sometimes. They want to leave things open. So judges will prefer a structured, ordered, and fairly predictable environment where they can make decisions and have things settled. Perceivers want to experience as much of the world as possible. They want to keep their options all open. They like to be flexible. Um, judges tend to be more organized and productive, while perceivers tend to be flexible, curious, and non-conforming. I would disagree. I think perceivers can be very organized and productive. I just think that perceivers may need a little more time to make like a big decision, right? They may, if I'm choosing between two courses at university, they may want to take both. So they're having a hard time making up their mind because they see value in both of them. All right, and here are your pairs again, like to have things settled versus like to keep their options open. Take responsibility seriously versus playful and casual. Pay attention to time and are usually prompt versus less aware of time and they may run late prefer to finish projects or prefer to start projects. Work first, play later, versus play first, work later. Seeking closure, in other words, they want the decision to get made, versus may have difficulty making some decisions. Seeing the need for most rules, questioning the need for rules. They like to make with plans and then stick to them, like to keep the plans flexible, find comfort in schedules and want the freedom to be spontaneous. And then you'd pick which one were you more of basically. Okay. You do have to do this with each section. And if you're taking a picture of this or um, as compared to scanning it, take a picture of each page. I think it's like four pages. If you only send me in two pages and I can only give you half the marks because I only saw half of it. So it's an easy 10 marks as long as you hand me in everything, okay? Um, so again, 
just like assignment number three, sometimes people feel like this is so easy. They don't have to hand it in, but really you do. And it is really useful for the next assignment. So take a picture of each page and attach it and send the email. If you have a scanner, like a, if you've got a printer and you can scan it, you can always uh, fax it over to send the email to student work. No, no period. I'm sorry. I don't know why that period keeps showing up in there and you don't need the period there either. Make sure to put your first name in your last name. Um, the course is OLC40 and the assignment number. I often have easily over 100 to 150 students in this course. So I may have a whole bunch of Sue's or I might have a whole bunch of people with the last name of Wesley or Gray. So you got to make sure I have both because otherwise it's really easy for things to get mixed up. Okay. So again, hang on to this because you're going to need it for the next assignment. Um, we're going to review your traits and discuss what you learned about yourself in assignment number five. But just to kind of like finish this off, um, a lot of times people would record their results like th this. They would say introvert, intuitive, feeler, perceiver. They would write down which ones they have. And then if you look at the first letter, you end up with like a four letter code that gets talked about. Um, here they, uh, this one would be uh, I, N, F, P. They use the N because they don't want to have two I's, okay? This is called the Myers-Briggs personality test. And there ends up being 16 different main personality types according to this test. And each have some very unique characteristics in how they handle the world. It's kind of interesting to study. Um, it's intended as fun, but there are some businesses that actually do use this as a way of like interviewing people. They run this test and kind of see um, if you'd be a good fit. Like somebody who is a salesperson, um, does really well if they have an extroverted personality. It might not be the right job for somebody who's very introverted. Um, it can be kind of interesting to play around with it. There's two sites I found that were pretty easy to look at. Um, here would be a quick example. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on this, but um, it's kind of interesting, I think, anyways. I don't know. I like personality tests. I think they're fun. Um, let me see if it comes up. Sorry. The internet's a little bit slow. Oh, I didn't like that. I wonder if I hit the firewall. All right. I'm probably going to skip this. But it is kind of interesting to put your four-letter four code in. Take a look at it. Yeah, it's not liking that. Um, and see what it says. Because it'll give really detailed information about what that person is like at work, what they're like as a parent, what they're like as a romantic partner, what they're like as a friend. And it's sometimes kind of surprising how how accurate it can be. So. That's kind of a, a fun thing. You don't have to do that. That's not proper marks. That's just kind of for fun. Okay, so the next part is assignment number five. And it's kind of, we're beginning our learning journals. This one isn't really, I kind of structured it a little bit because we had some problems with learning journals, but we're going to be doing more. Um, and I wanted to comment on why we have learning journals throughout the course, because not everybody likes them. Some people kind of really hate them. So first of all, it's a curriculum requirement. The government says that students in this course must keep a learning journal that documents their steps taken to self-monitor their learning during the course. That's one thing. It's a requirement. I have to do it. Next, journal topics give you a chance to look over your own work, notice your strengths, notice your weaknesses, and your progress in your literacy skills, which is a big part of this course. And third, it's kind of intended to give you a chance to practice this sort of reflective writing and learning how to discuss your learning, because that is a major part of our last assignment, the portfolio, and the final culminating activity. It shows up in all three of those. So it's doing that kind of activity is a major part of the marks near the end of the course. So I'm trying to give you some chances to practice that uh, over the course and get better at it. Um, I'm telling you this because we're we're partners, right? We're We're adults here. I want to make sure you understand this isn't just busy work. It's meant to help you develop that process and practice of self-reflection. Even after you leave school, you may find you still have literacy goals of some sort, right? Um, there's two different versions of the assignment. If you have last year's unit, some people still do, um, then there's a learning goal. I'm going to talk to you about it. And then if you have the more current version, it's the same idea, but it's just phrased a little bit differently. I will mark either one that you hand in to me. If you find that you have the older version, just let me know and I'll send you the newer stuff just because I explain things a little bit more. So here is the original assignment. If you have the summer course or last year's course, here, let me just see if I can pull this over. Okay. Um, 
Assignment number five, journal entry about me. This is worth 20 marks. It says, you've just spent some time thinking about the most important person in your life, you. Using what you've learned about yourself from the two surveys, we just did number three and number four, your task is to write a journal entry approximately one half of a page about the type of person you are. Your response will include details about what you've learned about yourself from each survey, as well as any other information you chose to include. You also need to include a literacy goal for the course and a comment about the how the seven grandfather teachings help you. Now, remember, we talked about the grandfather teachings in assignment one. So if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, just go back and take a look at that assignment and you'll have some ideas there. A literacy goal is something you wish to accomplish in this course. So for example, with regards to writing skills, maybe you wanna be able to write better paragraphs or be able to write a good cover letter or a resume. And for reading, maybe you wanna write a, read a chapter in a textbook and understand it. And I'm gonna show you there's a rubric or like an assessment chart on the next page. Um, for this, you have to do a rough copy and then make some revisions and changes and make it better and give me your final copy. This is the part that I think people found hard. So you are absolutely welcome to hand this in if this is what you have and you're comfortable, but I am gonna show you guys the, uh, the new assignment in case you'd prefer to do that. If you are doing this, you have to remember to include details from the two surveys. Some people forget to do that, but it's an important part. You have to choose a literacy goal because later on in the course, we look back at our literacy goals to see if we achieved them. So you have to have set one. And then preferably you make a comment on the seven grandfather teachings that may help you reach the goals. Okay. This is a generic uh, rubric assessment. I use it for all the the um, journals. We do a lot of journaling through the course because it is a requirement. Um, and I just kind of use the same ones. So you get used to the concept. Okay. Um, for this one, the first category is that your answer shows an understanding of the question as well as the journal and the paragraph format. If you do that very well, it's uh, a somewhat like pretty well, then it's a 70. Um, if it's some good, some not so good, then it's probably a C. And if you show like there's some difficulties understanding things, then it would be like a D. If you hand me in like one sentence, I just kind of won't mark it and I'll hand it back. Um, selects relevant details and examples to explain concepts and opinions. Sometimes people will just say something very general like, um, I want to read better. Okay, well, I need something specific, a specific example, a specific detail. The more times you use specific details and examples, I'm able to give you higher marks. Uh, the next section is your writing style, basically. Using interesting vocabulary, interesting sentence structure, variety, transitions, style, basically how you communicate your ideas, okay? And then we've got application of language conventions. Conventions are just kind of a general category, which means things like your spelling, your grammar, your capitalization, and your punctuation. And one thing I want to point out here is sometimes people will feel like this is the most important part of any writing, and I'm not very good at spelling, so I'm not going to do good at, at writing. But that isn't the case, because you can see it's only one of my categories. Even if you spelled every single word wrong, you could easily pass an assignment. I would just like, you know, talk to you about your spelling, right? But it wouldn't mean that you couldn't write because I'm looking at what your ideas are and if you understand things and explain things well, not if you spell perfectly or if you use punctuation perfectly. I'm just not worried about that. Um, length. I do ask that you try to meet the minimum standard, whatever it asks for. Sometimes people write way more, which I will definitely give you extra points for. Sometimes it's just below, like I asked for six or seven sentences and you wrote five. So I do kind of dock you. And then this one, I kind of, I think I changed this in my book, but I forgot to change it here. If you're significantly less than half of what I asked, if I said write six sentences and you wrote me one or two, then I, you know, I do dock you for that. Okay. So that is how I will mark the original assignment. Okay. And I'm going to talk about the original assignment here, just in case you've got it. A lot of people still do. Before I started, I would think about what I was going to write because there's three things to write about. And a lot of times what happens is people forget one of them. What did you learn from the quizzes? Write down any ideas about that. What are some possible reading or writing goals? You can write down any ideas you have from that. Um, assignment number three can be really helpful for that. But I'm also going to talk about how to 
set some reading goals when I talk about the next part? And then what are some ways that the grandfather teachings or even just one of the grandfather teachings might help you? Okay, so after I've got my notes, then I turn my notes into sentences, okay? Sometimes this is kind of hard for people. So here I've got thinker, feeler, notes, appear cool and reserved, honest and direct, good at seeing flaws and avoid arguments. And I wanna turn those into sentences. So I realized that I am more of a thinker when I make decisions. Lots of people have commented that I seem reserved or maybe even stuck up. I feel like I am just honest and I'm good at seeing what is wrong, which is another way of saying good at seeing flaws. However, I still try and avoid arguments, okay? So each time you would take a look at your little notes and then try and turn it into good sentences. Okay, so here is an example of a possible rough draft for um, assignment number five. Uh, the grandfather teaching I'm using for this course is bravery. It is hard coming back to high school after so many years away. My reading goal is to be able to understand the longer works like novels better. My writing goal is to understand grammar better so I know my sentences are correct. I found doing the checklist interesting. I am a little more of an introvert. I enjoy spending time alone. I make decisions based on gut instinct rather than logic, and I am very intuitive and I am a perceiver. Okay, so then take a picture of that or photocopy it. Keep one copy good, because sometimes people are making copies and making changes and stuff, and then they're like, oh, I don't like that. I kind of preferred my original, and you need to kind of still see it. Check your spelling, check your punctuation, after you've made all the changes you want to, copy or type it over and then hand both in. You wanna label it. This is my rough draft. This is my good copy. So I know which is which when I'm marking things, okay? Um, here are a quick list of things to check for when you're doing your rough draft. Does it make sense? So if I said, I kept fishing with dad likes to hunt too, am I fishing or am I hunting? I kept fishing with dad. Maybe I need to change it, but he also likes to hunt too. This is the biggest thing. You want to make sure that your writing makes sense so I understand you, okay? Have you duplicated small words? That's really common, like to write the, the. Have you left off some small words? Like I went to the store and I forgot the word the. Is it vague? Should I add some details? If I said I am a feeler, for example, blah, 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 and I would explain some example of why I say I'm a feeler. Have I repeated myself? I am a thinker. I like to think things through. That's why I'm a thinker. Yeah, I mean, kind of, right? But if I go back and look at that checklist, it would give me some specific examples I could use in my paragraph. Did you answer the actual question? And did you stay on topic? Every now and again, people kind of think of journals the way we did them sometimes in school, um, where people just wrote about their own lives and wrote whatever they wanted. These are kind of a little more targeted of a journal where I'm giving you a topic and you kind of need to stay on topic. So that's pretty important for these. It's no easy way for me to mark them if that isn't there. And then looking at, is it long enough? Okay. So then I've revised it and I've created a much better uh, version. I added kind of an introductory sentence. I added a nice closing sentence. And there's an example of my, um, my final version. That is if you have the original. I'm gonna go on to the new one because that's kind of more preferable. It's the same thing really. I just have kind of broke it down into smaller bits. Number one, name one grandfather teaching that will help you while doing this course and explain how or why it will help you. Two marks for that. Remember that the grandfather teachings are bravery, humility, respect, honesty, truth, love, and wisdom. Number two, tell me two communication skills from assignment number three that you feel that you are really good at. Again, two sentences, two marks. Tell me two communication skills from assignment number three that you want to improve on. Two sentences for two marks. Number four, write me four sentences about what you discovered or feel is important about your temperament while doing assignment number four. Four marks. And then number five, Name two reasonable literacy goals, one reading goal and one writing goal. Um, and you'll need to kind of go into details a little bit for this one. Uh, also two extra marks just for making sure that you write in a complete sentence. Like if you wrote uh, grandfather teaching and you just wrote love, I'm not gonna give you complete marks for that, okay? Remember that a complete sentence has a subject, which is a noun or a pronoun, 
and a predicate, which is a verb, plus any other words that connect to the verb and expand on its meaning. So question number one, name one grandfather teaching that will help you during this course and explain how or why it will help you. An example might sound, I'm gonna use a different virtue than these ones so you don't feel tempted to, to use mine, but I might say something like, I'm gonna use the teaching of patience while doing this course. The course is a lot of assignments and it will take patience with the material to get it all completed. I will also need patience with myself because I get frustrated easily when tackling something that is hard for me and I don't really like writing very much. Okay, number two, tell me two communication skills from assignment number three that you feel you're really good at. So that's that checklist about communication skills. I might have chosen conversational skills and Facebook skills. Okay, but I need to put them in a complete sentence. And if you give an example, that's a great way to expand your sentence. I think that I have good conversational skills because I seem to be able to talk to anyone and make new friends easily by talking with people I've just met. I also think that I am good at using Facebook to stay in touch with people by sending them little messages and asking them about their lives. Just looking this over, I've got also several times, I'm not sure. I also think that I am good. I don't know why I have also twice. There we go. At using Facebook to stay in touch. There we go. That's an example. Number three, tell me two communication skills from assignment number three that you want to improve on. So my examples might be writing short reports and using punctuation correctly but I'm gonna put it into a good sentence. I would like to improve on writing short reports for work because sometimes my boss asks me to summarize what happened as a, at a work event or conference and I would like to sound professional. I also would like to learn how to use punctuation correctly since it was never really explained at my school how to use commas and colons and semicolons. Question number four. Write me four sentences about what you discovered or feel is important about your temperament while doing assignment number four. So that was that part about, um, uh, you know, thinker versus feeler, perceiver versus judger. So here is an example of what I wrote. It's probably a little bit more than four sentences, but it's generally four sentences. I was not surprised to discover that I was an introvert because I feel more comfortable working alone, have good powers of concentration and like working behind the scenes. So those are all some examples of what makes me an introvert. I would have guessed that I was a sensor because I think I notice details a lot, but overall I have more qualities that make me intuitive. For example, I like to figure things out for myself and I tend to trust my gut when making decisions. Apparently, I also register as a feeler since I tend to avoid conflict with others and use my values and my feelings to make good decisions. Again, those are examples right from that chart. Finally, I am a perceiver. I like to keep my options open, like my plans to be flexible, and I enjoy being spontaneous. Last question. Name two reasonable literacy goals. Okay, so reasonable is, I, sometimes I have people writing me something like, I'm going to get every assignment perfect. Okay, well, that's, that's not very reasonable because, right, I don't think anybody could do that. I don't think I could do that, right? There's always going to be small mistakes here and there. We want to set a goal that's achievable, right? So one reading goal, one writing goal. Um, the checklist from assignment number three is pretty helpful for developing a writing goal. It doesn't focus on reading skills as much. It's possible you already have a reading goal in mind for the course though, in which case that's great, go ahead and use it. But if you're not sure, let's look at some possible reading goal. Okay, so setting a literacy goal can be challenging if you've never set one before. And occasionally I'll get students say like, okay, my goal is I need to pass this so I can graduate. Okay, well, that's a completion goal. It's not really a literacy goal. You're not telling me what you want to learn. You're just telling me that you want to finish this. And I get that, but it doesn't really work as a literacy goal. Um, and a lot of times as students, we got used to the teachers setting the literacy goal, but as adults, it's a good idea for us to develop our own literacy goals because then we have more ownership in them and we're a lot more invested in them achieving. There's all sorts of studies that show that when people pick their own goals, they're far more likely to achieve them. Um, and I think also that you notice progress more if you choose the goal than if I chose a goal, right? Like I might choose a goal saying, I want everybody to, I don't know, start writing paragraphs better. But if you're still thinking about writing sentences, that might not be a very workable goal for you. So sometimes people aren't sure when I say a reading goal, because 
most times everybody in the course can actually read fine. I, have, I don't think I've had any problems with that at all. So when I say reading goals, besides just being able to read the words, what other goals are there in reading? Well, one of the biggest areas is comprehension. In other words, being able to understand what we read and discuss it with an appropriate level of complexity. And we're going to be looking at thinking or reading strategies that can help with this area. So some possible reading strategies that you might want to look at are things like visualizing what you read, making connections between what you read and yourself or other books or the world around you, summarizing or condensing information down to the important points, prioritizing and deciding what's important, making inferences or reading between the lines to understand indirectly stated information. Other comprehension goals are things like locating the main idea and details of a text, understanding and discussing the message or the theme of a text, um, understanding harder vocabulary words, making comparisons between characters, setting, plot, or books, understanding poetic or figurative language. Another big area is understanding a wider variety of reading material. Sometimes in school, we got either very focused on like reading novels or sometimes understanding textbooks. And we often didn't really look at a lot of things beyond that. So in this course, we're going to be looking at things like opinion writing, news articles, novels, poems, procedural writing, business writing like resumes, informational writing like science um, paragraphs. And we're going to be studying the characteristics of different types of writing to comprehend their structure and what makes them different. So that might be a possible uh, reading goal and then later a writing goal. Um, some students want to know how to read a specific format better, like they want to understand newspapers better or they want to understand textbooks better for their other courses. Other students might add wanting to read more material. Sometimes people have a personal challenge of like, hey, I'm going to try and read, you know, two books each month that I take this course, things like that. Um, other possible reading goals might be things like effectively understanding nonfiction by using features such as a table of contents, headings, subheadings, sidebars, glossaries, typography. Unit two is all about this kind of stuff. Um, you also might want to understand fictional literacy elements better, things like plot, character, setting, conflicts, or theme. This is kind of woven throughout the course, I think. Writing goals. Like I said, you can easily use um, assignment number three to help you, but here are some other possible things that you might want to focus on. Might be a very small detail, like you just want to understand how to use punctuation correctly. Great, that's super achievable. Or you want to write better sentences and know they're correct. Again, that's a super achievable goal. That's a totally realistic goal. Sometimes you might have a more general goal. It could still be realistic. Like I want to be able to have more ideas about what to write. In other words, when you get an assignment, you look at the blank page, and sometimes we get a panic and we can't think what to write, and you're wanting help with that stage. That's fine. That's absolutely something we can work on. Or you want to develop a larger vocabulary. Okay, that's something we work on in this course too. And then other possible writing goals are things like improve your sense of grammar and your ability to write a variety of sentence types, improve your ability to write in proper paragraph format, Improve your ability to prove your points using examples or evidence from the text. Improve your ability to write in different types of formats. We talked about that. Journals, news articles, opinion pieces, short answer paragraphs, all those kind of things. Also, the other big one would be improving your ability to revise and edit your writing. This is probably one of the hardest skills, I think, for anyone, really, is when you look at it, it's like, oh, now how do I change it? How do I make it better if I want to make it better? So that's a, if you feel like you're a really strong writer, that might be a goal to pick for you because that's, I think, an ongoing goal for, for every, anybody who's doing writing. Okay, so here is a sample answer for question number five. I have decided my reading goal is to be able to use some of these reading strategies in order to understand what I read better. I have so many reading goals that it's hard to pick one, but I think I'm going to choose writing in different formats because in school we mostly worked on journals and reports for science. I don't really understand how to write in other formats, so that seems like a good goal to me. And it does to me because you can you can easily tell, hey, yeah, I did learn how to write a newsletter or I learned how to write a brochure or I learned how to write whatever. It's easy to take a look at your own work and see whether you met that goal or not. So please don't copy mine. Obviously, write your own, but I'm giving you an example of what it might look like.
Okay, we're almost done. Tomorrow, we are gonna be working on assignment number six in the course. And in this assignment, we make predictions about the novel, uh, Jimmy Comes Home. Predictions are when we make an educated guess as to what might happen in the future. And in this case, the future novel that we're about to read. So please don't start reading the novel quite yet because it makes it a lot harder to do the assignment if you've already read it, okay? So don't read it. Tomorrow we'll do assignment six and then we'll probably look at the, the chapter together and then work on assignment number seven, okay? Maybe even assignment number eight if we have got time. All right, thank you so much for joining. I see I lost somebody along the way, but uh, hopefully I will see people again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys later. Mm -hmm.